Do you know who sponsored and co-sponsored Georgia's HB 481, the heartbeat bill, and Alabama's HB 314, the near total abortion ban that is about to be passed into law if Alabama's governor signs it, which she could do as early as by the time this video is uploaded if she really wanted to. And I know that that's a bit of a fiery way to start a video just coming at you right out the gate like that. But the reality is this is an important part of the conversation about abortion legislation and anti-abortion legislation that we are missing. And it's frustrating for me, not only as a journalist, but also someone who really cares about this issue, that we have a difficult time naming who it was that sponsored these pieces of legislation. Hey Logical listeners, I know that the way that I started off this video is a bit unorthodox, but it's, it's really high time that we have a conversation about this, because we're talking about a lot of different abortion legislations and anti-abortion legislations, especially at the state level, and that's good, that matters. It's important that we're talking about this as a state's rights issue, which is probably the way we're going to have to frame it going forward, especially if Roe v. Wade is overturned. But we are not quite at the level we need to be if we're serious about having these conversations. Because a lot of major outlets are majorly dropping the ball on this issue. They are focusing on the people who are ultimately in charge of passing these pieces of legislation, but they're having a more difficult time focusing on the individuals who actually came up with these pieces of legislation. And that matters. That's a significant deterrence to having any actual serious conversation about this and ultimately combating these sorts of pieces of legislation. There are real reasons why we should be fighting to know who sponsored what pieces of legislation. And ultimately, it's because even though we can't do a tremendous amount to punish legislators for dangerous pieces of legislation like this if they're already elected, one, there are definitely things we can do even while they're still elected. But very importantly, if we actually care about these sorts of issues as much as we pretend to, and I believe that many of us do, then it's on us to do the research, figure out who did what, and also find out who is running against them and support those people. And that doesn't mean that the people who are running against them are going to be the end-all be-all. It doesn't mean that they're going to run on explicitly pro-abortion platforms or on explicitly pro-choice platforms. Ultimately, the main reason why we need to be supporting these people is that we need to make it clear that supporting these sorts of legislations is untenable. And that if you do it, your constituents will punish you and you will be replaced. That's an important part in combating anti-abortion legislation. It's an important part in combating these sorts of dangerous policies. But right now, if the people who are in charge of helping us understand these pieces of legislation don't actually explicitly state who supported these pieces of legislation, if they don't name the people who voted in favor of them, and very importantly, if they don't name the people who sponsored them and who brought them to the floor, then it's a lot harder for us to combat them. This is a very important thing that we all need to do, and if you are someone who is covering these sorts of policies, you need to at least try to name the people who sponsored these pieces of legislation. You need to say, hey, this is who they are, this is their past track record on these issues. And the reality is, it's entirely possible that a lot of journalists actually do do this. And there are journalists who pay this much attention. But it's possible that there are editors, on the other hand, who said that that's not a thing they should do. And there are a range of reasons why that might be the case. But even if that happens, those of us who are journalists who pay attention to these issues, like I do, we need to go out of our way to use our other platforms and to use what available means we have on hand to be like, hey, this is the person who sponsored this piece of legislation. If you care about this issue, if you want to make sure that even if this legislation passes and is made into law, the people responsible for it know what happens when they sponsor such irresponsible pieces of legislation, this is who you can support. Here is how you can donate to them. Here are things that you can say on social media, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of different things that we need to do, that we should be doing, that we aren't doing. And it's time that we acknowledge that at least partially, if we continue to have these sorts of conversations, we need to be doing some things differently. 
To give you an example of what it looks like to talk about the people who are behind certain pieces of legislation, let's talk about Representative Terry Collins for just a second. Representative Terry Collins is a representative in Alabama's House of Representatives. She represents Alabama's 8th district, and she usually defeats her Democratic opponents by a pretty solid percentage of the vote, by around either maybe a little bit more, or maybe a little bit less than 10%, which is, that's, that's a decent amount to beat your person by. But the reality is, in Alabama, that's interesting because a lot of people conceptualize Alabama as being a lot more decisively red than that. They would think that it'd be by more than just 10%. So that's interesting. That represents an opportunity for a lot of people. And a lot of people can show support for the people who have lost or the people who are running up against Representative Terry Collins. The last person who ran up against Representative Terry Collins was Billy Jackson. He lost by a little bit over 10% of the vote. And that is disappointing, but the reality is that does mean that there are people who are opposed to Representative Terry Collins in that area. So what we should be doing as people who care about this issue and as people who are frustrated with this is that we should be checking out the state people who are behind these sorts of pieces of legislation. We should be doing research about them and we should be letting people know who is running up against them. It's also worth noting that some of these people, when they run and they're opposed, only win by a really narrow fraction of the vote such as Representative Ed Seltzer. Ed Seltzer is a member of Georgia's House of Representatives, specifically District 35. And when Ed Seltzer ran and was opposed, he very narrowly won. He only won by less than 5% of the vote. And this is a man who once ran unopposed. So these are people that we can go after and that we can participate in replacing. And in case you're wondering why I brought up Ed Seltzer, he's one of the, he was one of the sponsors of Georgia's HB 481. Part of the reason why this is something that I feel so strongly about is that I feel as though the people who disagree with me, people who consider themselves to be anti-abortion, I'm not going to use the false language of pro-life because being opposed to abortion does not make you pro-life. Those people know the names of the state lawmakers who are their political opponents. They, they understand, they know the identities, and in some cases they know the past voting records of such people because the anti-abortion sort of political apparatus doesn't hesitate to state the names of lawmakers that they disagree with. And it knows the specific figures to go after. They do research, and while they may not share all the facts with the people that are on their side, they do not hesitate to share things like the names and the political beliefs of their opponents. They don't hesitate for a single second. And I feel as though that's part of the reason why it is that their people often feel a lot more active than a lot of people who are pro-choice feel. And obviously I'm speaking from experience and I'm frustrated about this, so I'm not exactly impartial even right now, but this is something that matters. This is one of the differences that enables them to have a clear route to victory because they know who to go after. They know who they're supposed to be trying to replace. And they know, a lot of times, they know the people who are running up against those people. And in a lot of cases, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that those people are challenged. They're challenged in primaries and they're challenged in general elections. And it's a lot harder for them to make sure that they, to make sure that a lot of people who are pro-choice are challenged in primaries because a lot of Democrats are pro-choice. And even then, Democrats that are pro-life often don't make that a gigantic part of their platform unless they already know that they're in a place where doing so would be politically expedient for them. But the fact of the matter is they're ready. They know this information. And this is something that those of us who are pro-choice should be doing ourselves. We need to have a similar structure in place. We need to know the names of the lawmakers who are doing things that we find dangerous and who are doing things that endanger the lives of women and of people who could give birth, regardless of their gender identification. Ultimately, we need to be as ready as they are. And part of that is knowing who is behind what pieces of legislation. I'm planning to either make a 
live stream covering this topic in more detail or do a video essay on this topic, but I wanted to get something out today because the more I read about Alabama's 314, Alabama's HB 314, the more it infuriated me. And some of the things that I read were genuinely astounding to me. And one of the biggest examples of that is that in Alabama's HB 314, there's no exemption for rape or for incest, which there usually is in, in most supposedly pro-life slash actually anti-choice pieces of legislation. And that's not for lack of trying. There was a Republican in Alabama who wanted to add those exemptions because the reality is that this issue isn't as black and white as it often appears to be. There are differences and there are debates even within the parties about these issues. There are Democrats who are opposed to abortion and there are Republicans who support abortion. And I don't want to try and scapegoat this and make this out to be a partisan issue when in actuality, it's, it's a lot more nuanced than that. I think it's worth having a live stream or a video essay where I talk about these two pieces of legislation as well as a piece of legislation that's currently making its way through Ohio that would affect the ability of some people to access IUDs, or at the very least, that's the way it's been covered. I haven't done the, I haven't done a huge amount of research into that one yet, so I don't want to make broad generalizations. But these are important issues, and I'm going to be talking about them more in depth. But because of what's going on in Alabama, I did want to talk and make a video about this today, as opposed to just releasing one long video later on when some things might have changed. That said, I hope that what I said here makes sense. I hope that it resonates with some of you. I hope that it encourages some of you to ask the right questions and to be ready to do the research yourselves, because even though the reality is it's fair to, for us to say that we shouldn't have to do all the sorts of research, especially because for some of us, this is going to be some of the first times we're trying to research these sorts of issues. We shouldn't have to do all of this alone, but because of the way a lot of either supposedly neutral or at the very least a lot of large media organizations have talked about these issues, we're missing important details that help us develop a more critical opinion of these sorts of things and that give us the sorts of nuance that we need and that we deserve. But for right now, the onus is unfortunately on us. So I do hope that this video encouraged you to do a little bit more research. I'll definitely be sharing some of the sources I used to inform my own opinion on this particular video in the description, and I'll also be leaving a pinned comment talking about this and hopefully asking some of the right questions. But until next time, I will see you guys around. Just know that I support you. I support your rights to choose when to start a family. I support, I support your right to an abortion. I support your right to plan your own families and to be a voice in this area because you have that right. And I hope that what I do here, what I did today, and what I do in the future encourages you to exercise that right because it's one of the most important rights that we have. Until next time, I'll see you all around.